Hello, my name is Vama Takane, and I am here with Warframe Breakdown, where we break down Warframe so that you may be broken in Warframe. Today we're going to go over damage, which is the most important thing to understand in all of Warframe, because you are dealing damage right from the get-go, right when you spawn into your very first mission. It's a huge aspect of Warframe. The more you understand damage, the easier it is for you to be able to create builds that will take down your level 200, 250, your boss fights, including your Eidolons. Um, there are two diff damage types that we will not be going over in this video. The very first one is Void, and the second one is Impair. If you need to look up information on those two damage types, you can go to Warframe.com, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, there is a link called Warframe Wikia. If you click on that link, it will take you to um, a page where you can find all the information you need to know about Warframe. That will give you information about the bosses, the characters, the individual Warframes, um, information on their augments and how to build them. You can find all your information there um, in regards to Warframe. Um, if you uh, feel free to go there and fact check us and make sure that all of our information is correct. Uh, without further ado, we will then begin going into our video here. So, the very first damage, t there are two da major damage types in Warframe. The very first damage type is physical damage. Physical damage consists of impact, slash, and puncture. Those three damage types combine together to create your base damage. Um, and all damage type for most weapons, it creates your base damage and is usually used for creating your elements. So, there are four primary elemental types, and that's going to be electricity, cold, toxin, and heat. Those elemental types combine to create secondary elemental types. This elemental type of damage differs from physical type damage in that physical type damage cannot combine in order to create any kind of secondary physical type damage. So we're going to demonstrate that here. We're going to first throw on a mod, which is called um, pr um, piercing caliper, and then we're going to throw on fanged fusilid, and those, as you can see, those two primary elemental types, one of them, the um, piercing caliper gives us puncture damage, the fanged fusilid gives us slash damage, they did not combine, they just added directly to our base damage. However, what we can do is we can take elemental mods like high voltage and rhyme rounds, and we can combine those two mods to create a secondary elemental type called magnetism. All four of the primary elemental mods can be combined to create six different secondary elements. You can only combine two elemental mods um, at a time to create one secondary elemental type. So when we're combining these, we can actually only combine from left to right, top to bottom. And that's going to be your order of combination. So the very first two elemental mods mods that you have equipped to your loadout will create one secondary type. At most, when you're modding, you're throwing these elemental mods on, you can only create at most two secondary elemental types at any given time inside of um, your build here. Okay, so when we're when we're talking about damage, um, the total amount of damage that you're dealing is always going to be your base damage combined with all damage that you have equipped, including your elemental. So total damage being dealt is going to be your impact, your slash, your puncture, and any elemental mods all added together. Now it's very important that we understand that the total damage dealt is not always the total damage received by the enemy. Total damage dealt also does not include any procs because all damage dealt and received are handled in chunks that we call quantified. They're quantified individually, which means we have to break our total damage being dealt down into teeny tiny pieces in order to add in all the different buffs and debuffs that when we're attacking a certain enemy receive. So with our Bratton Prime here, the very first thing that you'll notice is that we have an impact of 1.8, a slash of 21, and a puncture of 12.3. These all added together create our base damage, which so happens to be, in our case, an Amada Bratton Prime, to be our total damage of 35.1. So we can say... again. So, for an example, if we were to take these damage and we were to apply this 35.1 to a charger, and we're trying to see how much damage the charger is 
actually receiving, it's a very simple math. We just have to find our quantified value and then take our quantified value and multiply it into, um, take our quantified value and individually divide our primary damages amongst that quantified value and then add in um, our buffs. So what we'll do is the very first step of this process is we'll take that 35.1 and we'll divide it by 16 to equal 2.19375, our quantified value. Now we take that portion of impact that we have as an example, we'll do 1.8 divided by that quantified value, 2.19375, and that's going to equal our quantified our our quantified integer of 0.8205128. Now every single time we take a quantified integer, it the game just rounds it up to the nearest whole integer. So that would make this value be equivalent to 1. So 0.8205128, we'll just round it right up to equal 1, and then we take 1 and we times it by our quantified value of 2.19375, and for impact, the enemy is going to receive 2.19375 before any buffs. So we would just repeat this step for um, our puncture and our slash, and we'll get a grand total of 21.9375 for slash and 13.1625 for puncture. Now the total damage received by the charger will be... Um, won't necessarily be displayed as a decimal. It will just be displayed as a whole integer, which means it will just round up. So what we do is, after, in order to apply our buffs, we know that our charger has a 25% damage buff with slash. So when we deal slash damage, we get 25% more damage. The way we calculate that in is we take our three found values, our 2.19375 for impact, plus 21.9375 for our slash. And for because we get that buff with the slash, and we don't get a buff for impact, we don't put any buff for impact, but we do multiply in for slash 1 plus 0 0.25 for um, our slash buff. And then we take the take that value, multiply it in, and then we add in our puncture, our 13.1625. And that will get us a grand total of 42.778125 per shot. Now, this value won't be displayed. Instead, the game just rounds it up to 43. That will be the displayed value. So what we'll do is we'll take 20 chargers. We'll throw them in to demonstrate that we are only getting 43 damage when we are not getting any additional buffs. Now, one thing that you will notice as we are shooting these crawlers, that if we shoot them in the head, we will get damage buffs. And sometimes when we shoot them in other body parts, we'll get a different damage buff. So uh, if we shoot them in the head, we'll get a 2.0. And if we shoot them, say, in the arm, sometimes we'll get a 1.5 uh, 1 damage buff. But as you can see, because we're just shooting them, and when we don't get that buff, we're just getting a solid um, 43 damage coming out of that. Okay? As you can see, it's very important to know the buffs and debuffs of the enemy. For when you do know the buffs and debuffs of the enemy, you know what... It damage mods to actually equip to your weapon and warframe. We can't just throw any mods on to any given target and say, well, I just increased my damage by throwing a whole bunch of cold damage. Sometimes when we do that, we're just adding zero to the damage that we're dealing, and we're not really doing ourselves a favor by just throwing a random mod on there. We've got to know our enemy when we're going in, and then because we know our enemy, we will be doing just fine, and we'll be able to get the kills that we're looking for. So one way we can actually know our enemy, some of them are indicated visually, some of them are not so clear. Um, so to make it very easy, there are generally there are three major health modifiers for an enemy that would determine the buffs and debuffs that they each individually have. So the very first health modifier is just indicated by just a red health bar. You look at the enemy, you see a red health bar above them. They're going to be generally this standard um, health modifier. With uh, armored, armored health modifier is going to be indicated by an enemy with an orange health bar above their character. These um, enemies will usually have armor attached to them, which will deal different types of damage. And the last one is going to be shielded enemies. So shielded enemies are interesting because they have the very first part is going to be a red health modifier, but then the second portion of their health bar is going to be blue um, health bar. That blue health bar is the shield health bar modifier.
So for armored enemy or for unarmored enemies, they have just a standard formula. The damage that they receive is going to be equal to the base damage times one plus the health modifier. That health modifier is going to be indicated by a percentage. But when we're actually looking in our codex and actually looking at the actual enemy, we'll just see it indicated by the um, the type of damage that it is, and then it's just going to have some dashes or some pluses. That dashes is going to negative dashes and it's going to be indicated in red negative dashes and red is going to be indicated of a negative health modifier so the damage that you are that their enemies receiving is going to be actually less than what you deal um, a green icon with a plus is going to be an increase of that damage type so this formula is really really great just for unarmored enemies however we can't really use this formula for armored enemies because armored enemies of course have armor so with armored enemies, we actually have to use a damage modifier, which is based off the health modifier, but it's a damage modifier. So damage modifier, that value is going to be equal to 300 divided by 300 plus the target's armor after all reductions times 1 minus the damage modifier against the armor type. And that's going to be multiplied, that whole value is going to be multiplied by 1 plus the damage modifier against armor types times one plus the health modifier. So this formula generally works um, if you're looking at the enemy at its max level and you know it's just max cap of armor. But this doesn't work on an instantaneous level. Say like your friend buddy shoots him and then we shoot him and we're trying to see how much damage we shoot him after our buddy has just shot him. That's we're going to have to use a completely different formula for. So it's important to note that when it comes to armor there are is a twofold reduction in dealing, um, proxing and corrosive. As long as the enemy has armor, corrosive deals 75% more damage, but once the armor is gone, that bonus, that buff and bonus, it goes away as well as a simple one plus the armor modifier times the one plus health modifier. It would yield instantaneous results that would be false um, except for using our next formula. So our next formula is going to be the benefit of actually using the armor modifier versus not using the armor modifier. So we take the benefit of the armor modifier is going to be equal to the armor modifier plus the armor that the enemy currently has times the 1 plus the armor modifier. And we're going to take that whole value and divide it by 300 plus the armor modifier times 1 minus the armor modifier. And that whole value is going to be uh, times by the armor modifier. This would yield the exact armor benefit of any non-zero armor modifier at a given target's net armor value. So we can conclude that at the limit of the um, current enemy's armor as it grows or as it gets better, the benefit that we're receiving when we're actually dealing that damage is going to be equal to the 2 times the armor modifier divided by 1 minus the armor modifier. So we are assuming that the greater the armor of the enemy is, being able to reduce, that armor yields the greatest benefit to us as individuals that are trying to kill that enemy. Um, so therefore, we can conclude that our damage modifier is actually equal to 300 divided by 300 plus the armor that the enemy has times 1 minus the armor modifier. And then we take the summation of that as it approaches our value um, of 1 plus every single multiplier that we can possibly think of. That would be including crit, um, the enemies hitting the enemy's head, um, any, like a Cavat or Harvo's fourth ability, any one of those. This formula indicates that for all modifiers to take effect, an enemy w at any point in time, this will become more relevant in the future videos as when we go over boss fights and how to take them down. For now, we'll just leave it at that. In conclusion, what I wanted to show you is that we can't just add any mods to buff any value and expect to be successful at any target. Um, the last example I wanted to show you this is the Xmas Soldier. The Xmas Soldier that we have that we're going to display here. Um, if you know about Xmas Soldiers, just across the board, you have a 50% damage reduction. Just straight up, right across the board, every single damage type that you're dealing, elemental, non-elemental, is just reduced by half. Um, but this particular armor, um, this particular Xmas that we're going to go over is going to be the Arctic S Xmas. 
Um, it's going to be a Corpus Soldier, and we're just going to pull up his buffs here. And as you can see, look at all those negative buffs. So how much damage are you really going to be doing if... How much increase of a damage you're going to be really doing if you happen to choose slash damage is the primary damage to deal against this Xmas soldier? It's it's not very practical. It's not very likely, which is why it's very important that you know the enemies that you're going up against because this plays a very big role in your ability to actually survive in the level. So, as you can see, it has a negative it has a negative fifty percent damage resistance to slash puncture. It's twenty five impact. It's twenty five as well as the elemental types. Um, so, as you can see, it's very, very important to know your enemy. Thank you for joining us on Warframe Breakdown. What we have scheduled on the next couple of episodes, the very next one is going to be Critical Chance and Damage Breakdown, and then we'll also be breaking down s elemental damage and status procs. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like and share. And we'll see you guys next time on Warframe Breakdown. Bye.